Season three of the PBA League is underway. Eight teams featuring the world's best pro bowlers, including top draft picks, Jason Belmonte of the LAX, Sean Rash of the Brooklyn Styles, the Philadelphia Hitmen's Dom Barrett, Wes Vallott of the Pittsburgh Jackrabbits, the Dallas Strikers' Bill O'Neill, Chris Barnes of the Silver Lake Adam Splitters, the Motown Muscles' E.J. Tackett, and Pete Weber of the New York City WTT Kingpins. It's an all or nothing battle on the road to the Elias Cup, and it's next on ESPN. The 2015 PBA League is in session at Bayside Bowl. The party got started with a good old-fashioned tailgate. And this standing room only crowd is primed for the start of today's two quarterfinal matches. Two teams have already advanced in the PBA League quarterfinals. Brooklyn and the Silver Lake Adam Splitters advancing to the semifinals on the strengths of wins in roll-offs. Today, two more quarterfinal matches. And hello again, everyone. Mike Jakubowski with a 13-time winner on the PBA Tour. Also a winner in his first PBA 50 effort, Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. Kimberly Pressler also joins us lane-side today. Randy, the PBA League, we're in a unique environment. The fans are close, the fans are loud, and we saw a little bit of everything last week in our first two quarterfinal matches. You're right, Mike J. We did. First time the PBA has ever been to Portland, Maine, and we did not disappoint. We saw great split conversions. We saw some easy spares miss, but we also saw two matches go to a roll-off. Weber tries to get it done for the Kingpins. Instead, it was all about Parker Bone the third and the Brooklyn Styles advancing. In our next next matchup, it was the Philadelphia Hitmen. And Rhino Page goes to roll off as well, but it was Dick Allen needing nine. He gets nine, and they advance. Mike J, we have 20 different players on today's telecast. The names like Wes Malott, Norm Duke. We have a couple of Southpaws. But today we'll also feature the greatest bowler on the planet today, the two-handed sensation, Jason Belmonte. Two more quarterfinal matches on today's show. First, the Pittsburgh Jackrabbits, managed by Tim Mack, send Brian Smith in the leadoff position, followed by Dan McClelland, Ryan Simonelli, Oscu Palerma, and Wes Malat Bowles anchor. Going up against the Dallas Strikers, managed by Norm Duke. Michael Haugen Jr. leads off. Player manager Norm Duke bowls two and seven. Bill O'Neill, Tommy Jones, and Sean Malonado bowling anchor today. Kimberly Pressler is lane side with Wes Milan and Norm Duke. Thanks, guys. So the last time we saw these two, they were winning the doubles championship together on the same team. But today, they are opponents. So you both know what it's like to win. But Wes, let me ask you, what are some key things that you need in order to make a good team? Well, with this event, as Norm knows as well, part one of the biggest keys is having fun. And part of having fun is winning, and that's what we came here to do. All right, I like the confidence. Wes, but Norman asked the same thing of you. Well, you know, as always in a team event, the continuity of the unit is everything. But more importantly, it's this atmosphere. Kimberly, this is Portland, Maine. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. Wait till you get a load of this. Well, this crowd is ready to pump you guys up, and let's get to bowling, guys. Back to you in the booth. Thanks, Kimberly. This is Bull Portland, Bo Po for short. And this is how they conduct their leagues here at Bayside Bowl. Here's our quarterfinal format. This is a best of two Baker team match. Team advances by winning both games. Should they split the games, then there would be a roll off to advance to the PBA League semifinal. And this crowd is in tight on the action. Standing room to the left of the players. Bleachers set up to the right. And we are set to begin. Pittsburgh. Dallas, best of two. 
to advance to the PBA League semifinals. And leading off for Pittsburgh, bowling the first and the sixth frame, Masters champ Brian Smith. Opening pitch. Strike. Brian Smith has been so steady and so rock solid throughout the PBA League competition. Opening shot for the Dallas Strikers. It's Michael Haugen Jr. in league competition here. They make noise during play, so we follow suit. PBA League opening shot for Dallas. And Haugen matches Smith. Strike a piece. Playing conditions, Randy. Tinted in blue. <laughs> 42 feet in length. It's the PBA League oil pattern. The straight players, well, they get to play straight around second arrow, and the players that like to curve it, they can move in, and there is some out of bounds to the right. Still have to make some pretty good shots on this pattern. Dan McClellan up, he gets through the nose. Three, six, seven, ten, split. Dan McClellan is very good at doing both, and that is going straight and hooking it. And right here, he tries to play that straight tight line like Brian Smith did. Just had a little bit too much on it and a little left to target. Split conversion from McClellan. Well, you want to see somebody get fired up and fire his team up. That Dan McClellan can do a good job of that. And here's your hammer tough spare replay. The idea here is to get the bowling ball to the right side of the three pin, drive it into the seven. The ball takes out the 6-10. He does it perfectly. The only player manager in the PBA League is Norm Duke. He's up in the second frame. And a double on the board. Look at the intensity in Duke's eyes. Yeah, there's nothing more fun than bowling team event. You saw it in the doubles with him and Malad, man. It, it, like I said, if this doesn't get you fired up, then you don't have any, you don't have a pulse. I mean, this is awesome. And our players don't get the bowl team event, but once a year. And that's only if you're selected and drafted. Lefty Ryan Simonelli up for Pittsburgh. Third frame opening game of this match. Great shot by Ryan Simonelli. And a great start for both teams. Bill O'Neill steps up here in the third frame, looking for a turkey. Activate the Bass Pro Shops turkey tracker. That's three strikes in a row for the Dallas Strikers. Fans can try to bowl their own turkeys at select Bass Pro Shops featuring Uncle Buck's fish bowls. Promise you after watching Last week's quarterfinals, these players also practiced a lot of spare shooting on the TV pair today. The twin fin now for Pittsburgh. Oscar Palermo, fourth frame. High. Three, four, six, seven, ten split. Same leave, but add the four pin to what Dan McClellan left in the second. What's interesting is normally we, we bowl in a pair of lanes like five and six or seven and eight. Today, I think it's six and seven, isn't it, Mike? Six and seven here at Bayside Bowl. You see the ball returns to the left and to the right. And two, there is a wide. Two separate ball returns, two separate set T areas. And an open frame for Pittsburgh. Norm Duke is getting the crowd riled up for Tommy Jones. Tommy Jones, the only player with his name on both Elias Cups. Now competing for the Dallas Strikers. And a 10 pin. And a pretty good shot there for TJ. Right there. Tommy a winner with the New York City WTT Kingpins. And then last year the defending champs, the Silver Lake Adam Splitters. And now Tommy moving over to Dallas. For a spare attempt now for Dallas. Tommy, a second round pick for the Dallas Strikers. At the helm for the Pittsburgh Jackrabbits is Tim Mack. 
Five-time amateur bowler of the year, member of Team USA. He played college football at Penn State University. Tim making his name on the international bowling scene. And in charge of this Pittsburgh Jackrabbits lineup, he's inserted Wes Malott in the anchor. Fifth frame. I think Game it's a good one. I think it's a good move. Wes kicks the 10 out. Put the beast at the back of the bus. Very interesting player manager. The dark side sooner or later. Norm Duke for the Dallas Strikers has inserted Sean Maldonado in the anchor. Tommy Jones, Wes Malott giving each other the business. Sean Maldonado, we saw him in the doubles competition. This kid's got a lot of game and a bright future. Two-handed player with a hop. That's a timing maneuver. And Maldonado drops the rack. Good call by Norm Duke Early. A flurry of strikes get things started in this quarterfinal matchup. The rest of game one in this best of two, and we return to the PBA League. The PBA League quarterfinals are brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here by Maine Tourism. Discovering your main thing begins at visitmaine.com. By Barbasol, life is full of close shaves. Make sure your close shave is a Barbasol close shave. And by the USBC, a future for the sport. PBA League rolls on at Bayside Bowl. Today's Columbia 300 fun fact. Since the inception of the PBA Tour in 1959, the PBA League and the PBA Maine shootout mark the first time the PBA has ever contested events in the state of Maine. Hey, Mike J, you know the greatest bowler to ever come out of the state of Maine? Lay it on me. Pete Couture. Pete PBA, Couture. PBA champion, Pete Couture. Very good PBA 50 player as well. So we're in the second half of game one. This is a best of two match. You need to win two games to move on. The team split the games. There'd be a roll off. Brian Smith, sixth frame, working on the strike. Wide and a 2 8 10 split. It seems like that right lane has been a little tighter than the left lane throughout the competition. Last week it appeared to be the same thing. And the players make the moves. They swap lanes and tend to struggle just a little bit. Crouch Channing pick it up. And we remember when Mika Kovaniemi picked it up, and uh, no dice there, open frame, and uh, Pittsburgh in a hole. That was only the second time the 2 10 had been made on television. The first time, last summer, Dick Allen made it. The teams have switched lanes, so now Haugen up for Dallas with the lead and a strike working. Haugen dead solid. Well, he's a great leadoff bowler, especially on this oil pattern when you have to keep your target in front of you. And he, there's nobody better on tour throwing it straight than Michael Haugen Jr. Pittsburgh Jackrabbits manager Tim Mack said, uh, Danny Mack reminds me of myself when I was younger. He fits in well with this team. Danny lets it fly in the seventh. A little high. Four pin. Very similar style to Tim Mack uh, Dan uh, is Dan McClellan. Danny's got that high backswing, that hand that opens at the top. Uh, very reminiscent of Tim Mack and, and his form. Uh, they both shave their heads. And Danny Mack looks like he could have played football at Penn State like Tim Mack did. Be interesting to see Danny run a four or a 40. And now Norm Duke is up for the Dallas Strikers. PBA Hall of Famer, third place all time with 38 Tour titles. He earned that title in the PBA Doubles Championship with West Milan. Seventh frame. High. 6 10. Yeah, but no harm done. Just leaving the 6 10. And they've got a commanding lead. <laughs> they were watching last week. Getting a chance yeah. to speak with Norm. He just really enjoys this team concept. He, he wanted to be a manager. Uh, he uh, loves that he's affiliated with Dallas because he uh, has Texas ties. And, and uh, Norm picks up the spare there for his strikers in command here in game one. 
You heard Norm tell Tommy Jones he was trying to get his right shoulder out of his teeth. Simonelli struck back in the 30s on the opposite lane now. Eighth frame, Pittsburgh searching. And Simonelli, oh, seven oh. pin. Really like his game, though. A lot of power, speed. Fun to watch. Very athletic move. Watch how athletic this is at the foul line. Tim Mack calls him a strong lefty and says his confidence just keeps getting stronger and stronger. Well, he's not short on confidence, you know, and I know he went through a spell where he was doubting himself, but he had some nice redemption uh, not too long ago at the World Series of Bowling in Vegas and really worked hard on his game with Mike Jazz now, changed some things. Last time we saw him on television, I thought that was the best I'd ever seen him throw it. Billy O'Neill up, a frame, light, 2 4 10 split. Well, they've got such a big lead. It's hard for me to believe that the Jackrabbits can actually come back in this first game. If they were to strike out, they can only shoot 191. <laughs> Dallas Strikers are in the two teams. Ascu Palerma up for Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my hands to the top. I actually forgot to tuck the hole. Tim Mack trying to work with Ascu to right there, yeah. slow down a little bit and concentrate more on the shape of his shot. Pure pitch, 10 pin. Really good looking shot there from Ascu. And I, I think the, the advice Tim Mack gave him is perfect. He needs to learn to create a little bit more touch. He did win one title, which was a WBT title last year in, in uh, Thailand. <laughs> Nobody shoots 10 pins like Oscar Palerma. Spare. Jones now up for the Dallas Strikers. Get a great look at how tight the fans are to the action here in the PBA League. Jones, tough break on the seven. Back to back, really good shots for Tommy Jones. And he left a 10 pin in the fourth, and now it's a pocket seven pin. Norm Duke says of Tommy Jones, he always rises to the occasion. And Norm feels that Tommy's as good as he's ever been right now. Oh, not right there, open frame. Dallas with the big advantage. <laughs> Soft 10 for West Milan. Dallas will take the first game. Best of two, which means that Pittsburgh will need to win game two to force a roll off to advance. Single pins were an issue in our first quarterfinal matchups. Wes, sloppy landing, but gets the job done. Well, the best they can muster is 169. Dallas Strikers already have 182 in the ninth. Win and move on, lose and go home. Best of two games. If they were to tie one game apiece, we'll go to, to a roll off. And game two of our match is coming up next. Maldonado in the anchor position, delivering for player manager Norm Duke. And the strikers are on top 1 0. More action coming your way for Bayside Bowl. Norm Duke signing a lot of autographs at Bayside Bowl for the very appreciative fans in the PBA's first ever visit to the state of Maine. That young man is going to take home a Hall of Fame souvenir. The greatest PBA trick shots is voted on by the fans. 
The number four selection is this spinning ball trick by Norm Duke. You ever tried this, Mike? Herb. I've not. I have. It's not easy. That one's pretty good. The second ball makes the spare that the first ball leaves. Voted number four. The number three trick shot is voted on by the fans. This one by Oscu Palermo, a classic. You ever tried this, Mike? Never. I did. I ruptured my spleen. <laughs> Oscu Palermo, spleen intact, pin deck, not. Look at this ball is... reaction and perfect strike. Redonkulous. Which leaves us with two to decide on. What is the greatest? Is it this one? By Bowling's original showman, the great Andy Verapapa. Pretty cool stuff here. Or is it Chris Barnes and the Flying Eagle? I saw a guy try this once. He sent that pin he got it. up into the pin deck, and it cracked. It just absolutely shattered the pin deck light. There was glass all over the lane. Vera Papa or Barnes, which would be the greatest PBA trick shot? Go to PBA.com and vote. Right now, it's PBA League quarterfinal action. Game number one, Dallas Strikers 201 to 168. And uh, Dallas with a 1-0 lead. Kimberly Pressler is with Tim Mack. Kimberly. Thank you, Mike. So, Tim, you guys are behind right now, but you still have a chance. You could win this next match and force a roll-off. Are you doing any strategy changes right now? Yeah, we're going to make some ball changes with some of the guys. We're going to change you how we attack the lanes a little bit, and hopefully that's going to pay off in game two and get us to even so we can get into that roll-off. All right, well, good luck to you guys. Thanks very much. Back to you in the booth. Thanks, Kimberly. When we return, this crowd has been fantastic. Bo Portland and Bopo. Supporting the PBA League like only they can here in the state of Maine. Game two of this match with the Jackrabbits and the Strikers continues. The PBA's first ever visit to Maine and the first visit to Maine for many of the PBA's players as Jason Belmonte, Bill O'Neill, and Walter A. Williams Jr. sit down to a Maine delicacy. Yeah, you didn't want to get your fingers anywhere near their mouths. But this looks, I, I actually watched this, I witnessed this, and it was, it was a beautiful thing. I was, I was extremely envious of those three men. They attacked that lobster like deeply experienced longshoremen. Here's our quarterfinal format. This is the best of two Baker match. The team advances by winning both games if the team split. There will be a roll-off. Dallas trying to go 2-0. Pittsburgh trying to force the roll-off. And uh, Michael Hagen Jr. will begin as the players have now switched. Opposite lanes. Hagen. And uh, rolls out the five. Paralyzer five down. <laughs> and Hagen playing to the Bopo crowd here as this one takes a, its own sweet time, but gets the job done. <laughs> Pittsburgh, Brian Smith. Winner at the 2003 USBC Masters, a major titleist. Operates a bowling center in the Roseburg, Oregon area near the other Portland. His opening shot here in game two, uh, seven pick. It's amazing Brian Smith didn't win more times on the tour. Great job. As good as he is and as good as he throws it, man. And he's a lot of fun to watch. And, and just one of the one of the best people, people you'll ever meet. Just a good dude. Good spare conversion for Brian Smith. Reinforcement from Mac on the team strategy as Kimberly Pressler received that information before this game, too. Now, Norm Duke shutting out all the distractions around him, focusing on the shot. Big chance to double here early in game two. Acts it to wave off and oh. doesn't. Maximum penalty, big four.
Well, I don't know if it just hooked early or if it was left of target. Hard to see from our vantage point, but the end result, not good. Big four has only been made once in the history of bowling on television. Norm gives it a shot. Well, he only gets one and working on a strike. They lose a couple of pins in count. I will pick it up. Opportunity now for Pittsburgh to jump back in. They have uh, an early advantage and now an open frame to work with. The 2011 Canadian National Champion toes the line here in the second for Pittsburgh. Mixing. Strike. Yeah, nice break. Good shot and nice break for Dan McClellan right there. Another one of our up and coming players on the tour has made a few telecasts in his career and looking for that first win. O'Neill in the third. Great Perfect. shot. Five time winner on the tour, Bill O'Neill. That lobster must have done him right. You know, it's lower in cholesterol and calories than you might think. Yeah, until you dip it in that pound of butter. That you need to try to avoid. Now Ryan Simonelli, fifth in the 14 Masters, made the show there. Didn't like it. Wide. wide. Picket fence. Yeah, he got it wide. Two titles to Ryan's credit. You see this ball gets left to target. He knew it immediately. Not enough recovery on the outside part of the lane on this 42-foot oil pattern. Shooting the picket fence, the one, three, six, ten. Well, you can't cover that any better. Come on, guys. Pick me up. Picked it up. Game two. Pittsburgh down a game, but up 16 in this game. Tommy Jones. Now up for Dallas. He's got his signature on both Elias Cup trophies. One for New York City and one for Silver Lake. And the 10 pin. Tommy hasn't missed the pocket yet and can't get his ball to strike. Another really good pitch. Norm Duke, speaking of Tommy Jones, said he seldom loses mentally. Mental makeup, strong part of Jones' game, and a mental error there. Missed single pin. That's the second one for him back to back. All right. Yeah, he did stick a little bit there at the foul line. Oscar chases it down the target line, gets a strike. Looking to get back in this are the Jackrabbits taking advantage of an open frame in the second and an open frame in the fourth. And are we looking at overtime for the third consecutive matchup? Maldonado placed in the anchor position by player manager Norm Duke, fifth frame. And he delivers again. And Maldonado with a nice strike there. Wes Malott now looking to get up in the fifth frame and increase the lead to 38 as we take another look at Maldonado's strike. There's that little hop. That's his style, and it works for him. And when a Hall of Famer calls your number and puts you in the anchor hole, that is a lift. Yeah, no kidding, huh? That's perfect placement of that sign. Yeah, but I don't think he likes that anymore. I think it's just beast now. Big West Milan, fifth frame. Chance to double. Wow. And he got it. Wow, that thing went out for burger and fries. It came back with steak and baked potato. That's how far right that was. That was ridiculous. Pittsburgh needs this game to force a roll off to advance and another look. The only thing missing on this bowling ball is a left-hand turn signal. Look at that. Oh, snap. And Pittsburgh now with a lead, needing this game to force a roll-off. The final five frames of our game two. Coming up next, the PBA League rolls on at Bayside Bowl. Dallas with the one-game advantage trying to avoid a roll-off. And we'll uh, have more of this quarterfinal matchup.
The third season of the PBA League rolls on at Bayside Bowl. Tremendous fan support here in the state of Maine. They came with signs. They came with heads pasted on sticks, and they came with a whole lot of enthusiasm as we roll on with our quarterfinal matchup between Pittsburgh and Dallas. Time for the Track Tech Talk, Randy. Yeah, 15-time title is Tommy Jones. Check out this athletic move here. That swing almost vertical. But in any sport, you got to be a good athlete. Tommy Jones is a really good athlete, one of the better athletes on our sport. Look at that arm swing there, that knee bend at the foul line, and the balance. Again, watch how steady this head is. And almost all of the great players throughout the years on our sport, the head actually dipped down when they got to the foul line. Jones looking for his third Elias Cup with three different teams. Game two of our quarterfinal matchup between Pittsburgh and Dallas. As Dallas won the opening game, and uh, Pittsburgh is striking back. Mike Haugen is up in the sixth. For Dallas, and he doubles, he cuts into that lead. When they get ugly, when they get nasty, what do I always say, Mike J? Straighter is greater. That was Mike Haugen just throwing the high hard one at the 1-3. That's Michael Haugen Jr.'s A game. Makes it work there. Pittsburgh needs this game to force a roll off. Double working, Brian Smith, important shot, sixth frame. I'll take this guy's game anytime. And update the Bass Pro Shops turkey tracker. That's three strikes in a row for the Pittsburgh Jackrabbits. Oh. Pittsburgh. Is trying to run away with this, but Norm Duke step up here in the seventh frame and cut into the deficit. Big four last time from Norm. Oh, oh my. Mixing, swishing, hit, and a strike. <laughs> Lots of great pin action from that 16 pound bowling ball delivered from the Wee Iceman. And Dan McClellan keeps the strike string going for Pittsburgh. They maintain a 38 pin advantage. They need this game to force a roll off. Yeah, making great shots when they have to to get back in this. O'Neill up for Dallas. Eighth frame. He misses a strike. Still in it. Dallas would prefer to end it in two. Ryan Simonelli up in the eighth frame. Pittsburgh up 28, can extend to 38 with a strike. Another nice shot there. They're really stepping up when they had to. Remember, it's best of two games. If they lost this one, or if they lose this one, they're eliminated from this competition. Tommy Jones trying to avoid the Dallas Strikers going to a playoff. Five bagger for Pittsburgh. Tommy Jones trying to match it here. Foundation frame. Hasn't thrown a strike yet. We're going to a roll off. All right. It's pretty much over now. You will be throwing the roll off. You'll be going second. So, whatever you got to do here to know exactly what to do. They bought it. You heard Norm talking to his team about the order they're going to use in the roll off. Sorry, right, Bubba. Hey, I'm, we put you, uh, yeah, well, you and I put us in there. Oscar Palermo for Pittsburgh. He drills the rack. There will be a roll off. Three for three in our quarterfinals. This one will go down to a single shot.
Sean Maldonado in the tenth. And he mixes a strike. Tim Mack mulling options for the roll off. Mack seeking out counsel from several sources. He will call the number though. Tough not to put that man in the spot. Yeah, I agree. He looks really good. Order, we have to stay with that order once we start. Listen, we can change it now. No, we cannot. And that one comes up a bit high. 208 here for Dallas. So Sean, you, oh, me. Yeah, we had to decide it when we picked the line. It goes Sean, you, me. Maldonado on top, followed by Tommy Jones. And now Wes Malat finishing up for Pittsburgh. Yeah, Sean is going to go first for the Dallas Strikers as the Beast and his team are two strikes away from shooting 270. Baker, pretty big, pretty strong. Now the question is, what does Tim Mack do with his order? I think you're looking at the guy that's going to throw the first ball for them. Tim Mack talking about Wes Milad. He said when his picture is right, he's Picasso. That's pretty good. And uh, Wes capable of painting a broad brushstroke with that piece of bowling equipment. We go roll off after this fill ball. One more for 270. Bama Lama. 270 Baker game for the Pittsburgh Jackrabbits to extend this quarterfinal match to a roll off to advance to the semifinal. And they ring the bell here at Bayside Bowl to signal the roll off. Team managers will each select one player. They'll Throw a shot on the finishing lane. Higher pinfall wins. They will rotate through the lineup in the predetermined order. If we would go five ways, they would repeat. Tim Mack. And Wes Mallott will begin the roll off. What's Sean Maldonado going through right now? Well, he, he, he's got some uh, he's got some some bats in the belfry right now he's got a lot of things going on in his mind this man's been here plenty of times and knows exactly what to expect I think I think it's a big advantage for Wes here we go and a nine count so Maldonado ball in hand can end it right here for Dallas What a position to be put in, and now your time to shine right now in front of this audience. For the win. Mixing. Eight count, Pittsburgh survives. Shocking ending as... Man, that was Norm Duke putting Sean Maldonado in the position, and Maldonado did not deliver, and Pittsburgh moves on to the semifinals. Yeah, I feel bad for Sean Maldonado. It looked like he threw a pretty good shot. That ball never picks up down the lane. I don't know if it was just a little firm or if he moved a little deeper, but you can see the ball just trying to labor to get back to the pocket. Could have got the break by tripping the two-pin forward, but denied. Pittsburgh advances to the semifinals.
Motown and L.A. are next. The PBA League quarterfinals are brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By AMF. Roll this way. By HotelPlanner.com, the best place to book hotel rooms. Best rooms, best rate, guaranteed. And by Barbasol. Life is full of close shaves. Make sure your close shave is a Barbasol close shave. Bayside Bowl, Portland, Maine, home of the PBA League for 2015. And now a look at the Barbasol close shave of the day. Sean Malonado with an eight count. And Norm Duke's pick does not come through as Pittsburgh advances to the semifinal. And we have our third semifinalist as Pittsburgh advances. The Detroit Motown Muscle and the LAX, the final of our four quarterfinal matches on the road to the Elias Cup Finals, April 19th on ESPN. Time now for the PBA Team Challenge featuring a PBA League squad in a head-to-head -head battle with an amateur team from Bayside Bowl's Bowl Portland League. The PBA Team Challenge, Body English, the 2010 Bopo Champs face the New York City WTT Kingpins. Five players for team, one shot through the lineup. Higher pinfall will win the frame if we're tied after five frames. A sudden death roll-off will decide the match. Kimberly Pressler is laneside. Thanks, Mike. This is Charlie Mitchell. He's with Body English. They like to call you by the nickname Carl Hungus. So, Carl, let's ask you this. This is the first time the PBA has come to Maine. What does it mean to you guys to have the pros here in Portland? Oh, it's an incredibly special moment for us. Um, we have an amazing bowling community in Maine, and we're just so excited to share it and to share that enthusiasm with the pros and to get a chance to bowl against them. It's pretty amazing for us. These fans are pretty excited to see oh, yeah. you guys bowls, but I have one last question yeah. for you, Carl. Yeah. Can you beat these pros? Well, look, we have a Hall of Fame coach and Johnny Petragli over there. We're ready for the bright lights. I think we can take these guys. All right, let's get to follow them. It's on. Body English has enlisted uh, Johnny Rex as uh, their coach as we enter the Body English team huddle. Taking on the New York City WTT Kingpins managed by Carolyn Doran Ballard. Johnny Petraglia called into action by Bot English. One of the greatest of all times, JP, the Hall of Famer. He's won a PBA title in six different decades. National title in each of six decades. I saw the last one on the PBA 50 tour. An amazing accomplishment, and Johnny called into action. Leading off for Body English, Chris Grittani. They call him Filthy McNasty. Only champion in both the Bopo and Main Ultimate. Wide of the headpin, seven count. For New York City, towing the line, Amleto Monticelli, PBA Hall of Famer. I think Amleto can handle seven. Packs the pocket, does Monticelli, and a frame in the column of New York City. The ageless one, Amleto Monticelli. Kayleen Mitchell, slow roll. 2013, most likely to marry Carl Hungus winner. Let's it fly. Get up, get up. Also wide, Not bad. eight count. Not bad, Kayleen, not bad. DJ Archer for New York City WTT Kingpins. Eight or better to cl claim the frame. Nine will do. Two frame lead. Pros showing no mercy. Dan Kenny up for Body English. They call him Steve McQueen, two time Bopo league champion. Crossing over. Oh, nine count.
Scott Norton can, can secure the victory for New York City with a strike. Hey, Norton! For the win. Packs the pocket, New York City, three and out. And a selfie. <laughs> Good stuff. We will bowl through our fourth and fifth players. Nate Croto is Natro, and he introduced free agency to the Bowl Portland League. Extra frames here as New York City has already secured the win a nine count. And Nate gets to go up against PDW. Extra. And a double move. <laughs> Check and mate. Oh, Pete, you need to get a hobby and quit watching wrestling. Anchor player Charlie Mitchell, managing partner here at Bayside Bowl, the column Carl Hungus, and nod to the big Lebowski in his anchor frame. Get it, Charlie. Get it, Charlie. Hungus up against the king of swing. No lack of nicknames on the PBA Tour. Fagan. Nine or better and a shutout. No mercy. New York City WTT Kingpins 5-0 over Body English in this PBA Team Challenge. New York City pitches the shutout. Winners in the PBA Team Challenge. And we'll return for our final quarterfinal matchup. The Detroit Motown Muscle faces the LAX next. The PBA League rolls on at Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. Extra Frame, the PBA's online video subscription service, has coverage of every PBA 50 Tour event in 2015, starting this weekend in Newport Ritchie, Florida. In addition, the coming months will feature exclusive coverage of the PBA's Summer Swing and PBA Tour Extra Frame only events. Don't miss any of the action. Head over to PBA.com and click on the Extra Frame link for more information. One more quarterfinal matchup as the Motown Muscle takes on the LAX. And the lineup for Detroit's Motown Muscle managed by Hall of Famer Del Ballard Jr. Leading off John Zerbinski, followed by Josh Blanchard, EJ Tackett in the middle, Mike Devaney and anchor player Ronnie Russell. For the LAX managed by Andrew Kane, Stuart Williams leads off, Andres Gomez, Martin Larson, Patrick Allen, and Jason Belmonte will anchor. Kimberly Pressler is with the LAX anchor. Thanks, Mike. So, Jason, the past few seasons for you has been pretty phenomenal. You've been winning just about everything, but the Elias Cup, you have yet to win with the LAX team. So, how challenging is team bowling for you? Look, it's really challenging. I mean, I mean, you look at all the teams and the names on them. It's so evenly spared across that. Um, there isn't a weak team out there, so obviously the competition is going to be really strong. And the format, so cutthroat, one shot here or there could be the, the, the you know, determine your exit in or continuing in the tournament. So it's really tough. We've got a new look team. Let's hope we can bring it home this week. All right. Well, good luck to you. Cheers. Final quarterfinal matchup. It's best of two Baker team bowling. Five players combined for one score. Team advances by winning two games. If there's a split, we'll have a roll-off. All of our quarterfinal matchups thus far have gone to roll-off. There's your Detroit Motown muscle. And leading off is John Zerbinski out of North Tonawanda, New York, 27 years old. He's been touring for five years. All the players on Motown this season are all new. 
Brand new lineup. First shot for the muscle. And a 10 pin for Zerbinski. Last year, John Zerbinski was really solid in the team competition. Played for New York. He was an Elias Cup champion in that first season with the New York City WTT Kingpins. Uh, all the teams subject to a redraft this year. That's fair for Zubinski. Slash on the board. Filled the frame. Good start. 10 pin was converted. That's a bonus. Take a look here at Stuart Williams beef stew. They're not booing. They're stewing. <laughs> Only one American on this team, and that's Patrick Allen. Opening shot for Stuart Williams. It's a good one. Strike. Can opener. Caves the seven and the ten. Andrew Kane, the president of the United States Bowling Congress, captaining this club. And here's another look from the side at Beef Stew. This man can do a lot to a bowling ball. He can throw it just as straight as an arrow, and he can hook the whole lane and everything in between. A lot of talent in that man's body. Josh Blanchard just a touch high. Pays the penalty there for 10. Josh Blanchard just coming off of his first win. At the Brunswick Euro Challenge at the Dream Palace near Munich, Germany on the World Bowling Tour. And uh, Josh with a long path back to the U.S. to compete here in the PBA League. And now a PBA Tour Titleist. Out of Gilbert, Arizona after the split here. And just picks up the cut, gives it a run. The front of that four pin lead forward almost hit the 10. Check this out. This gets pretty close. Off the sideboard. It got pretty close to that 10 pin. Now Andres Gomez from Bogota, Colombia. Smooth stroke. And he gets a nice little fall of the <laughs> four pin. <laughs> Nice little love tap on the four pin. The trip four pin is the right hander's best friend. He's asking for that ball to push about halfway down. Hold your line. Hold your head. EJ Tackett skates wide. Fortunate to leave just the one and the two. Throw it harder. EJ right. Tackett was Thank so you. jacked to throw that shot, he almost came out of his shoes. Watch this. This explodes up at the foul line. And there's that OB that we've been talking about. We've seen a couple players find it. Last week and this week. Spare conversion for Tackett and the Motown Muscle. LAX with a double on the board. First game, best of two competition. First team to win two games advanced to the semifinals of the PBA League. Now Martin Larson out of Gothenburg, Sweden. Third frame for LAX. And crossing over 10 pin. There's a young man that's going to win a title here very soon. He's been knocking on the door. Finished fifth at the Masters. Lost a, in a heartbreaker. In the Scorpion Championship to Michael Haugen Jr. Perfect cover for Martin Larson. Andrew Kane says uh, Martin Larson is solid, doesn't get into trouble, and he brings a lot of balance to this team. Just real steady, makes good shots, keeps the ball in play. Nothing real erratic. Mike Devaney up for the Motown Muscle. Del Ballard says Mike Devaney is a smart player. Most notably for his recognition of ball reaction. That one comes.
comes up just a touch high. Four pin. Smart player. He's a good player. He's very solid. Can do a lot of things with the ball. He, he's not one dimensional. Like he, I think most people know him for trying to hook it, but Mike can do a lot of things. A lot of things with his wrist. Change his role. A lot of talent. Spare for Motown. They trail by 23. There's your manager for the LAX, USBC President Andrew Kane. President of USBC since 2012. Made a show out here. Really good player and a really good guy. And his LAX team finishing runner up here in the PBA League last season. Only American in the lineup is Patrick Allen. Oh. Strange 10 pin. Wow, welcome. How about a swift kick in the teeth while we're at it? That wasn't even, that wasn't even remotely kind. Watch this. It's good to see PA out here. Bowling well again, healthy again. And then something just went right over the top of the, the 10 pin. I think it was a pin. Andrew Kane says that Patrick Allen representing USA, there's no one more proud about wearing the red, white, and blue in international competition than Patrick Allen. And a good spare conversion for PA. LAX is up 22 pins. First game in this best of two. Now a first look at the anchor players. First for Motown, it's Ronnie Russell, two-time PBA Tour titleist here in the fifth. Flat 10 pin. I moved left and it never really picked up. So now, Jason Belmonte, three-time consecutive Masters champ, two-time consecutive Tournament of Champions winner, anchoring for the LAX, runner up here last year. Just a tad high, gets the nine out, and almost sloshes the four. Here's a bowling ball going through those pins with bad intentions, almost leaves the four nine, trips the four, or excuse me, the nine pin out. And then uh, almost bumped the four. The LAX here in game one, 22 pin advantage. On the strength of England's Stuart Williams. Colombia's Andres Gomez. More of our final quarterfinal matchup here at Bayside Bowl. The PBA's first visit ever to the state of Maine. Just beautiful and picturesque. What a great place to visit for the first time. It really is. My first time in this great state as well. I only have one state left for the Randy Slam. All 50 states, Mike J, and that's Alaska. Oh, sounds like a cruise might be in order. That would be great as long as you're buying. Lots of great seafood on the West Coast, lots of great seafood on the East Coast, and lots of great fans here at Bayside Bowl. Standing room only to the left, bleachers seating to the right, and the players in the middle of a quarterfinal matchup here, PBA League action. Opening game in this best of two, John Zerbinski up for the Motown Muscle. Trailing by 22, here's six frame and a strike for Zerbinski. Nice shot there, Johnny. Stuart Williams up for the LAX. A winner on the PBA Tour at the World Series of Bowling at the 2011 Viper Open. Stuart Williams is truly unique in terms of the way he lets go of the ball. Uh, there's just about everything about Stuart Williams is unique. Watch this follow through. Boom. How does he generate that heavy roll? Well, he, he, there's a cup in the wrist and the elbow on the way down and then, and then once 
that elbow and, and, and wrist straighten out at the bottom of the swing, he really, you really don't need a follow through. The follow through doesn't create power and rotation. There's the bend in the cup. And then all he has to do is flick it off of his wrist. And oh. another single pin spare miss. So now all of a sudden, Josh Blanchard can step up and even things up here with a strike. Winner overseas and a long trip back for this competition. Gets high, 6-10. Well, that was a good shot, but just the wrong alignment for that lane. Remember, the teams have now changed lanes. So Josh makes a good shot. Did not anticipate that much curve. Watch this. It's, this looks great out of his hand. He likes it. He's waiting for it to go through the pocket. And all of a sudden, it grabs and checks and goes high. The, his next shot on that lane, I promise, will be a 3-2 or 4-2 adjustment. And what I mean by that, Mike J, is four boards, three to four boards left with his feet, two boards with his target. And that'll be the adjustment that he'll make. Much tougher to make when you only get two shots per game. They, you know, it's hard for the team to anticipate coming out of commercial, changing lanes. Zerbis Zerbinski throws a perfect flush strike. He had to get some information back by John, but apparently that information didn't work for Josh. Gomez jo mixing. Ten -pit. Here's a guy that's really worked hard on his game as well, known for a guy that really liked to flip around the side of the ball and throw the, low, the, the real slow curve. Andres has learned how to keep his hand up the back and, and go a little bit straighter when he has to. Andrew Kane says he's got a rhythmic game and, and he can strike forever. And a good spare conversion there. And a 10 pin lead for LAX here. Game one of this best of two. Team must win two games to advance. If they split the two, there'll be a roll off. Now, EJ Tackett, the Harry Golden PBA Rookie of the Year in the 2012 13 season, up here in the eighth frame for Motown. Two fit. Yeah, a little fast. You see him making a motion, basically imitating his hand going around the bowling ball early. and. And that's going to make it skid. Remember the first time up. His ball never recovered from the wide errant shot to the right and missed the head pin. EJ not real excited about the last two shots that he's thrown. Ellie's up 11 here in game one. Martin Larson up. Top five finish in the 2015 USBC Masters. I like that shot, but I'd work on the fist pump there. I don't, I don't think he was really rhythmic. Wasn't a full wind on up. On that react. The great one, Mark Roth. PBA Hall of Famer Mark Roth. And he will distribute the MVP trophy here of this PBA League, the Mark Roth. PBA League MVP. Mixing strike for Devaney. <laughs> One of the funniest guys on tour right there, Mike Devaney. Well, you want a good laugh, hang out with him for about an hour. And then go get your stomach so sewed back together. Important shot here for PA. Foundation frame chance to double. Former player of the year. Toes the line here, ninth frame. Seven pin. Oh, that would have been uh, daddy lockups there if he strikes out. It's a pretty good shot, too. Motown Muscle could still strike out to shoot 204. LAX can now strike out to shoot 205 with a spare conversion here.
Patrick covers it up. LAX up by 11, entering the 10th frame. We'll meet our anchor players now to finish up here in game one. Ronnie Russell will finish out. Can shoot 204 with three strikes. And the 10th. Good shot, but just didn't catch enough of that one three pocket. And Ronnie leaves that shaker 10. They're in trouble. The spare here, LAX will just need a mark and good count. Manager Del Ballard putting together this Detroit Motown muscle and his method was to pick young and up and coming and hungry players. It's something he wanted a mix of hungry bowlers that also had some confidence and he picked up and coming players and then fill in the experience of Devaney in that mix. Best uh, Motown can shoot here is 184. how tight down the lane that right lane is. It's actually the left lane, it's lane seven. Remember bowling on lane six and seven, very unusual. Two ball returns, two separate set T areas. Belmonte needs nine. Oh, got a little wide. Two, four, eight, double wood. Now he has to convert. He has to make this. He needed nine on the first ball and it was over. He gets seven. Now he needs to make the two, four, eight. And this is not the easiest spare to shoot at. You got lots of things that can go wrong. You can leave that back pin, the eight pin. Wide right open frame Motown survives final score 182 179. Cannot believe I just saw Jason Belmonte do that. He tried to get softer with it and just allow that ball a little bit more time to hook into that spare and then got it wide of the track. And look at it just catches all the oil and it's see you later. It's in the gutter. Shocking finish. LAX gives it up to Motown. Game two and we return to Bayside Bowl. Welcome back to Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. PBA League action rolls on our updated bracket. A shocking finish as Detroit now up 1-0 over LAX. We're looking for our final entrant into the semifinals. Brooklyn, Silver Lake, and Pittsburgh have already advanced into the PBA League semifinals on the road to the third Elias Cup. Hall of Famer Del Ballard managing the Motown muscle in victory there. And Del Ballard, a Hall of Fame career on the lanes. And let's flash back with Ebonite to Del Ballard's first career title. 1987 U.S. Open in Tacoma, Washington at Narrows Plaza. I'll never forget this event. I bowled it, I was there. Del Ballard Jr. taking Hunt, PDW, Pete Weber. And it would have been Del's first title and a then record $100,000 for his win. Ballard defeated Ron Bell in the semifinals and then defeated Pete Weber 247 209 in that title match. Ballard in control of the crowd response. Detroit, LAX, game two with Detroit leading when we return to Bayside Bowl. PBA League quarterfinals at Bayside Bowl in Portland, Maine. Motown in shocking fashion up 1-0 on the Belmonte whiff in the 10th frame. 
And game two for LAX to win to force a deciding roll off. We've had roll offs in our three previous quarterfinal matches. Stuart Williams will begin for LAX. Ring 10 pin. Another good shot by Stewie. Pins are not cooperating. But a real nice shot, just leave a ring in 10. Remember, it's the best of two games. Winner moves on, the loser goes home. If they do tie, they'll go to a roll off. And it's interesting, thus far in the quarterfinals, no team has been able to sustain game one success. I don't know, that was an awful huge gift that uh, Motown received courtesy of Jason Belmonte. Get the one three. Make your spare. Basic advice from Del Ballard, hit the one three and make your spares. Zerbinski from Motown. Oh, ring tip. Another nice shot by John Zerbinski. Go with Thomas. Go with Thomas. Six pin goes around the 10. Oh, and he liked it. So did his teammates. They'd like it even more if he converts the 10 pin. John has his name on the Elias Cup with the first edition and when he was with the New York City WTT Kingpins. And good spare for Zubinski. Solid fundamental player out of the Wichita State Collegiate Program, along with Josh Blanchard. Plenty of team competition between those two, the top of the lineup. Now Andres Gomez for LA. Must find a way to win this game or be eliminated from the PBA League. Watch the rhythmic style. Beautiful. Drops 10 for Gomez. And the big finish. Open hand, a lot like Pete Weber, and just kind of flicks those fingers open at release. And it's, it's a great way to practice for somebody who doesn't do it. It keeps you from grabbing it. Now Blanchard for Motown. Behind Zervinsky. That's high and 3 6. Could have been worse. Come on, John. That's fair. All the matches back and forth throughout this competition. One team would win the first game. They couldn't convert and come back and win the next game as we take a look at Roll Tech tournament stats. Multi pin spare conversion for the general public at Roll Tech centers. Less than 20% PBA Tour players. At the World Series, 74.35%. Good cover. Ball gets both sticks. Very nice. Important shot here. Even though early in game two for LA, Larson has the ball. I think anytime you're bowling a Baker style format and you have a strike up, that next shot is very important to double up with. Look out. Just a bit outside. Wide right, just the one and the two for Martin Larson. Yeah, Martin's really disgusted with that last shot, too. Poor shot, misses right, hits the slick out of bounds area. And he knows it. They were working on a strike. Could have increased the lead to 12. Conversion for LAX, short lead here. They need this game to force a roll off to advance in the PBA League. EJ Tackett up for Detroit's Motown Muscle. Del Ballard Jr. calls EJ the biggest up and coming player on tour. Oh, rings a 10. Well, EJ's got a lot of talent. He's a, he's a, a scratch golfer plus. Handicapped golfer, uh, great, great bowler. 
He's got a lot of power and a very small frame, but he's a really good athlete. Yeah, for and players out there that are of smaller stature, how do you begin to try to generate the type of power that EJ can generate? Watch what he does when he gets to the foul line, how he comes up and out of it. They're teaching the same thing on the, on, on the golf tour. And these players are using the ground up to generate power. That's what EJ Tackett does. Think about it like a, like a long jumper or a sprinter and getting into that posture and that stance and then exploding upward. That's what EJ Tackett does. That's how he creates all that power. Patrick Allen up fourth frame for L.A. Three pin lead. Down a game. Best of two in the PBA League quarterfinals. Maybe, brother. That's no maybe. Strike for Allen. Toying with the crowd here at Bayside. Yeah, let's not forget back in 2004, 2005, Patrick Allen earned over $350,000 on the tour. Second highest single season earnings ever. Devaney up, and he drills the pocket for Motown. Nice shot again by Mike Devaney. Now Jason Belmonte can extend the lead to 13. Just a touch high four pin, but what a great shot after a disastrous 10th frame. Yeah, nobody wanted that one more than Jason except for his teammates. And the ball stopped at the right time, otherwise it could have been a big split, only leaving the four pin. Good spare conversion. Belmonte cleans it up. <laughs> Three pin lead for LA. Down a game, Ronnie Russell. Another important opportunity with a strike working. And now Russell can uh, double up and take the lead as they try to take out LA 2 0. Fifth frame. Mixing. No, two whoa, eight whoa. becomes the two. Nice break having the eight pin come out of that. Leaves him with a single pin spare attempt. Ronnie Russell should have no problem with the two pin. But again, going back and forth where the anchor bowlers could have done some really good work for their team. Instead, at best, it's going to be two nine spares. And each team is clean with no doubles. Motown up one and down three pins here. Trying to go 2-0 and in advance to the semifinals. The final five frames of our quarterfinals in the PBA League are coming your way next. PBA League quarterfinal between the LAX and Motown Muscle continues. Motown up a game, but LA leads by three pins here. LA needs this game to force a roll off. Great fan support here at Bayside Bowl and the Bowl Portland community welcoming the PBA with open arms. And we appreciate their great support. Stuart Williams up for the LAX. Sixth frame here in game two. Williams in the pocket, but just a touch high. The teams have alternated lanes once again. LAX down 1-0. They need to win this game to keep their hopes of advancing alive. Seven career European tour titles for Beef Stew. Williams fills the box in the sixth. Two pin lead for LAX. And again, uh, both teams clean. Neither team has doubled. Zerbinski now, five-time member of Team USA. Out of the Wichita State program, plenty of team competition on this man's resume. Now up in the sixth for Motown. That checked up way early, 3-6-10. That's what we saw when 
LAX came over to this right lane, lane seven. A lot, of, lot more hook than anticipated. Right here, John Zerbinski finds that out the hard way by going through the nose, leaving the 3610. Good spare, yeah. cross lane. And Dell Ballard earlier just saying, hit the 1-3 and make your spares. I think Dell knows and gets, gets the feeling this is going to be a tight one coming down to the last shot. But you do not want to leave an open frame. Each team on a spare. Andres Gomez, his last title coming at the 2013 PBA Carmen Salvino Classic. LA up five, seventh frame. And down goes the 10. <laughs> <laughs> and up stands LAX. Yeah, well, don't try this at home, folks. Talk about the love tap on the 10. This is a flat 10. The head pin responded correctly. Watch this. So it does the exact move it needed to to come off the sidewall and roll into the 10 pin. That's a long courtship love tap. Now, Josh Blanchard in the seventh. A little tight, nine pin. Oh, good shot, bad break. Getting down to crunch time here, only a couple of frames remaining, eighth, ninth, and tenth. LEX desperately needing to win this, otherwise they go packing. Motown Muscle will move on. Josh Blanchard, the Harry Golden PBA Rookie of the Year, Randy named for Harry Golden, who is such a large part of PBA history. Well, Harry Golden was uh, our tournament director for the start of my career back in 1980. And uh, I think Harry's probably the most respected uh, of all the tournament directors that we've had for the simple fact that he was Harry Golden. And it didn't matter if you were Marshall Holman or a young kid like myself that had no titles coming on the tour. He treated everybody the same. Double four, Larson, good pitch. And LA takes a 16 pin lead. Trying to force that roll off. Well, this is the best shot Martin Larson's thrown. And it couldn't have come at a better time as LAX doubles up. Stu Williams first off the bench. Now over to EJ Tackett. Eighth frame working on the spare. Tackett gets his 10 pin late to fall. Him. He almost knocked his glasses off with that react. Slapped his hands so hard. Hit himself in the head. Belmonte saw it. <laughs> See if we can catch the react right here. Watch this. <laughs> Foundation frame, Patrick Allen. Oh, man. Six pin. Really needed that one, setting up the 10th frame for Belmonte. PA strikes there. They could have struck out and shut out Motown Muscle and taken it to extra frames. Right now, Motown Muscle can strike out ninth and 10th frame and, and win this thing and send LAX home. Last title coming in the 2009 Japan Cup. PA, nickname Mop. Not sure why it's Mop, but it is. Hey, Mop. Spare for Mop, especially here at Cole Portland, home of the nicknames. And I have the tendency to think that a player that's a Mop tends to mop other players up. You mop the floor with them. Yeah, that, that's kind of what it sounds like it should be, but. Oh, look out. There's that, there's that lane seven again, and you can see it checking down lane. Mike Devaney has made some good shots, and I think that may be the first time he's missed the pocket. But watch this ball check up. He likes it right there, and then all of a sudden, it looks like somebody kicked it left. Good news for LAX that Devaney didn't strike, and they didn't double there. LAX still has a chance to send this to extra innings. Belmonte needs to wipe clean the memory of the previous 10th frame. 
Well, he needs. He I'm sorry. Put this away for LAX right here. Yeah, well, he needs just good count, and then, then there's nothing Motown can do about it. But a strike here, and it's over. They'll get extra frames. That's a good mark. And I get the feeling of who might throw the roll off for LA. Who? Might be Jason Belmonte. You think? On that same lane. <laughs> you see how that, that ball labored to hook. You see how much more friction there is on the right lane? A lot of down lane tightness on lane six. Let's see what this ball does. All right, I'm with you. You sold me. You're Andrew Kane, you're looking at your lineup. Do you give it to Stuart Williams? Uh, do you stick with your anchor player? Andrew Kane will make that decision. Del Ballard will counter. Update, the Bass Pro Shops Turkey Tracker. Three strikes in a row for the LAX. Del Ballard looking to counter LA's move in the roll-off. All quarterfinal matches end at 1-1 and go to roll-off. And uh, Del Ballard has indicated that Ronnie Russell will bowl for Motown and go up against Jason Belmonte. So Russell saw what Belmonte did and now has the opportunity to map his strategy here on the right lane. Mm. Ronnie can't seem to find a way to strike. Hits yeah, the pocket, up. gets nine. Soften up and get, more, get that inch angle a little quicker. You heard him tell Del Ballard, he's going to try to soften the speed up just a bit to get the ball into the pocket a little bit sooner. He got through to the hook and over bounds, so does the best Russell opting for the feeler ball there instead of converting the 10 I like pin. that, the feeler ball, I like that. Cast the net for the lobsters in this time. They ring the bell here, and that indicates roll off. Team managers selecting one player, Jason Belmonte for LAX, Ronnie Russell for Motown. Each player will throw one shot on the team's finishing lane. Higher pinfall wins. If they tie, we'll go down the order. Every quarterfinal has come down to the roll-off. The winner moves on to face the Pittsburgh Jackrabbits. The loser goes packing. All the pressure of a single ball roll-off in team competition. The team is on your shoulders. Belmonte will start. Walked it out and a big reaction from Belmonte. That was a big react. Big react. Now Ronnie Russell must strike to extend the roll off. Boy, he's made some really good shots. He's going to try to soften up just a little bit here. And the 10 pin stands LAX after the shocking end of game one. Belmonte, the two time reigning player of the year, ball in hand. He gets the job done. Well, Belmonte made a, 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 a really nice shot there, but the last couple of shots Ronnie Russell's made have been about as good quality shots as you can make. And he's got nothing for it. He got robbed there. Robbed in the 10th frame of the last game. And it's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes sometimes in our sport. Ronnie Russell makes great shots. Doesn't get anything out of it. I don't think he wants this one over. Just a little soft into the pocket. Six goes to the sidewall. Messenger comes over and goes behind. Ronnie likes it. He's running it out. But the pins don't cooperate. 
the margin of victory on the PBA Tour and in the PBA League is just that razor thin. LAX advances to the PBA League semifinal. The PBA League quarterfinals are brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here by Maine Tourism. Discovering your main thing begins at visitmaine.com. By hotelplanner.com, the best place to book hotel rooms, best rooms, best rate, guaranteed. And by AMF, roll this way. The 2015 PBA League semifinals are set. The Brooklyn Styles will face the Silver Lake Atom Splitters and the Pittsburgh Jackrabbits face the LAX PBA League semifinals. Time now for the Geico Championship recap with Randy Peterson. Hey, Mike, 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 Mike. Speaking of Mike's, there's Mike Halgan Jr. throwing a nice strike for the Dallas Strikers, but this match would head to a roll off. And it would feature the beast, Wes Malott, and Sean Maldonado. Wes gets nine. Maldonado has a chance to win it. Oh, my God, look at the two-pin shakes, but it doesn't go down. The Pittsburgh Jackrabbits are moving on. Then in our last semifinal, we just witnessed Belmonte do a, a gutter ball. What? He had a chance to win that game for his team. Instead, they, too, go to a roll-off. And it's redemption time for Bill Monty. Yeah! Yeah! That's good for Len! Ronnie Russell needs all 10. Throws a great shot. Messenger denied. He gets nine. And LAX moves on. Now let's go down to the floor and Kimberly. Oh, thanks, guys. Jason's over here pumping up the crowd. But Jason, let's talk real quick. Because at the beginning of the show, we talked about challenges and team bowling with you. And in that first match, you got a gutter ball. You were in the doghouse, but you redeemed yourself in the roll-off. How did you wipe away the gutter ball and perform so well in the second? Yeah, it's not easy to forget about gutter balls. It was obviously <laughs> a pretty bad shot, but, you know, that's bowling. You know, every shot is on its own merit. You've got to let go of the past. You can't look forward too far in the future. You've got to make the shot in the moment. So I was really happy. I was able to strike out in the 10th, and then that uh, roll-off shot, it was really good off my hands. And, you know, whatever happened, I was proud. I was able to actually throw a better shot than I did the last time I was in the 10th there. How excited are you guys to advance? Oh, very excited. You know, the crowd here in Portland, unbelievable. And this is why we love the ball in front of these guys. It means everything to us to win. That's what we're going to do. Congratulations to you and LAX. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Coming up next Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, it's the PBA League semifinals on the road to the Elias Cup. Next Sunday on ESPN. Pittsburgh advances to the semifinals. And Dallas Strikers are eliminated. And Jason Belmonte goes from the doghouse to the penthouse as LAX advances. For Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, this is Mike Jakubowski. So long from Bayside Bowl.